welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. So, I said this week I was going to do the VGAs. And then I watched the VGAs. Or rather, I thought about the VGAs. And, well, my camera doesn't want me to do the... My camera doesn't want me to do this, frankly. It's fluctuating in, fluctuating in and out of focus. I feel like it's trying to protect me and save me from having to discuss and think about the horror that was the VGAs. The... I mean, the, the news didn't want me to talk about the VGAs. We got a bunch of things I could have talked about in terms of science fiction films coming up this this upcoming year that I could talk about. The Blacklist, the list of all the various screenplays that don't have, just haven't been produced, but people want to see produced, or in the industry want to see made, come him out. I could talk about that. I made a promise. I made a promise to you that I would talk about the VGAs this week. So I'm going to talk about the VGAs. Where to begin about the VGAs? Let's accentuate the positive. Let's let's talk about the previews. The previews at the VGA, as far as the, the game previews, were good. The best part of the show, and if this sounds like damning with faint praise, that's because it is damning with faint praise. The games that they showed were good games. The games, in terms of interesting games. They are big titles. They are titles which are generally new. There are I mean, there are sequels, but there are a lot of new IPs highlighted here. Um, and what I saw for most of the games was interesting. In particular, we found out what the next title from Naughty Dog is going to be. Um, they finished up Uncharted this year. The third game in the series, and go, judging from Naughty Dog's previous track record, they do three titles in a series and they're done. Maybe, just maybe, they do a kart racer. If it's a game that's conductive to doing a kart racer. Nothing of the kind here. We're getting a new franchise. And the game is The Last of Us. We didn't have any actual gameplay. This is clearly a cutscene. They put a bit at the beginning saying, oh, this is actually rendered on a PlayStation 3, or, or this is playing off of a PlayStation 3. But it's an in-game cutscene. It looks like it's likely using a similar engine to the Uncharted games, but it's an in-game cutscene. It's definitely a cutscene. There's nothing gameplay about it at all. In terms of what we see, it, it gives an idea of what the gameplay might be like. But, other than that, I'll, I'll just grab the concept. It's a post-apocalyptic survival game, possibly of a survival horror variety. But it looks like you're fighting either aliens or mutant critters or mutant alien critters. Not like, you know, either your type 1 shambling or marrows or your type 2 sprinting Snyders. When you find a better name for the runners. Um, but when you're not facing zombies, as we like to think of them. The gameplay looks to be um, very sort of scrounging around find to find stuff. So it looks like if, if the cutscene is really representative of gameplay, this looks like the game's going to be less shooty, more melee focused. The being is Bullets are going to be hard to come by, and so you just can't go guns blazing as much as Nathan Drake does. You have to make shots count, and perhaps engaging enemies and fighting them head on is not the best option. Evading, avoiding, running is generally better from a gameplay standpoint. And that looked interesting. Uh, and that was the, that's the biggest standout title of the whole show for me. There were other titles. We saw Fortnite. From, 
For, we saw Fortnite from Epic Games, which looks okay. Doesn't really quite look like my cup of tea. Some more Mass Effect. Honestly, from what we saw Mass Effect, just a lot of it is stuff I'd seen already. So hey, more, more Mass Effect. The weird bit of the new games we saw is Command and Conquer Generals Two. Command and Conquer Generals was an interesting game. It, it went slightly outside of the standard gameplay style of the Command and Conquer series, um, and definitely dropped the typical factions of the Brotherhood of Nod, the GDI, that sort of stuff. But the game instead focused. Um, on uh, three factions instead of the usual kind of two and the factions in the game there was no real out and out villain except for like the terrorists and resources were definitely handled much differently supply lines were important and that sort of thing but what made this odd in my opinion is that the game is being released by a new branch of Bioware. Bioware, I mean, their strength has always been RPGs, and technically you want to go before that medical instructional software. That's how they got started. Fun fact, Dr. Ray, head of Bioware, is an actual MD. But anyway, the point is RPGs have been Bioware's strength, and when EA brought Bioware into the fold, the way things were going, it looked like Bioware was going to be EA's RPG studio. This changes that. We have a new Bioware sub-studio or studio being created under the Bioware label, depends if you want to think about it, that exists solely, that exists for real-time strategy games. It feels like they're watering down the brand. I don't know what to say. I mean, EA... Bioware is the perfect RPG brand. You've got them on several different RPG franchises. You've got Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Star Wars, The Old Republic coming out soon. And presumably you can make a bunch of other RPGs in other genres outside of this. Heck, um, you can get the rights to freaking... Um, Alpha Protocol. If Sega doesn't actually own that, you get Bioware and Obsidian to team up and make Alpha Protocol 2, and we would have possibly have the best modern role playing game ever. I'd be, I would buy that in a heartbeat. But instead, we're getting a real time strategy game. I could see this being re not necessarily failing horribly, but not quite working as well as you think. I feel like they're, bu they're, they're bucking off of the Bioware name without meaning understanding what that really means. So, other than that, I mean, nothing else really was, okay, none of the trailers were terrible. And if that's what we went to the show to watch, you saw some interesting stuff. The problem is, the, all of the rest of the show that framed around it was a steaming pile of crap. This is my first year actually watching the Video Game Awards. I'd heard stories secondhand. People who watched the show went, oh my god, this is terrible. This is a horrible show. Um, nothing but celebrities coming out and spouting, and, and spouting off about how much of a gamer they are when just from the way they talk about the games, when they carry them, just the way they talk about the games, it's kind of clear, these aren't real gamers. These aren't celebrities who have made a reputation of playing games or have are public about having played games, like well, Ice-T. Famous rapper, famous actor, is a fairly substantial gamer, plays a hell of a lot of Gears. It's the reason why he, part of the reason why he's in Gears 3. It's not just because, oh, you want to have Ice-T play a guy. It's because Ice-T is a fan of Gears. No, no, instead, we get Will I Am coming out and 
talking about the wonders of Mass Effect. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Everything you really needed to know about where the show was going and the type of show this was happened immediately after the opening clip show. The show opened with a kind of montage of the various games that had been nominated for the Game of the Year with the show's host, Zachary Levi, in amongst the clips. Fine. Oscars does stuff like this every year. If they're not doing an outright musical number about each of the, the nominees every year, they do something like this. That's fine. Roll with it. I, I can dig that. And then, Zachary Levi comes out on stage. And I will mention, no fault against Zachary, Le Zachary Levi on stage and Felicia Day in the backstage segments. They were fine. They did the best with the horrible material they were given. Bob's material is horrible. Zachary Levi comes on stage, talks about acceptance speeches running long, and about what happens with what will happen if somebody goes too long. And their example is this fake soldier comes out on stage, takes down Zachary Levi, and then spends a good three minutes, or felt like three minutes, teabagging him. Really? What the f- <laughs> What is wrong with you, Spike? No, I'm sorry. I, I know exactly what's wrong with you. You are pandering to the lowest common denominator of the 18 to 35 demographic. You, what it is, is you are not aiming for a market that wants to be taken seriously. You actively, the, the people actively don't want to be taken seriously. That's not just you are not taking them seriously. They don't want to be taken seriously. They want to be pandered. They actively want to be pandered. The problem is this. The kind of people who actively want to be pandered don't care about awards shows. Or at least serious awards shows. They... You're looking, you're talking about the kind of people who watch um, the, who watched the MTV Awards the Viewer's Choice Awards for music and for, yeah, for music videos and for movies and that sort of stuff back in the days when spontaneously you might get a streaker during the show. Or Flea would go on stage and climb up the back backdrop or something like that. They didn't care about the awards. They didn't care about the performances. They just thought something dumb might happen. And you could tell that that's, what the, that's the audience that Spike was aiming for on the show because, frankly, they only hand out like three or four awards during the show proper. I checked back. The majority of the awards, like important awards, were handed out before the show, um, either in the pre-show or before the pre-show and just got kind of casually mentioned there. I'm not talking like little stuff either. This isn't like... At the Grammy Awards, Best Spoken Word Album, Best Classical Album, Best Novelty Record. No, this is like Best Xbox 360 Game, like Best Role Playing Game. And all of these got formally announced during a clip show where, where they got spat out so fast that I couldn't stop and write them down. I didn't have time to write down the names of the games. Um, That is... That is horrible. That is not how you do an award show. It's an award show. It's in the freaking award show. The focus of the show should be on the awards. The, sketch, the sketches in any comedy should be focused on the awards. This doesn't mean you have to be all black tie and stick up the butt and overly dramatic. But I could actually help. Some injection of drama would be fine. In fact, injection of drama would be warranted. I mean, 
Honestly. When they announced the awards they did have, there was no open there was no opening of an envelope. Opening of an envelope is a little thing which injects a lot of drama. It means the person who goes up there to hand out the award doesn't know in advance what's going what the award's going to be. They are as surprised or not as the audience is. That alone, just simply going up on stage and having the person having a envelope which they open, don't put the winner on the teleprompter, that's great. They didn't do that. Instead, the, the show basically focused so heavily on the new game reveal trailers and that sort of stuff, and focused on the... Hell on the stupid video game freaking freaking bad humor for anything useful to happen here and for anything to be taken seriously to happen there. Shigeru Miyamoto became the first entrant of the video game basically Hall of Fame which would mean something if this was a show where the awards meant something. But this feels like a Hall of Fame that no one will take seriously. It, because it's being handed out at the show where we open up with people getting tea bags and we keep the character around lingering in the background as a warning against stuff. Against being serious. Against taking the show like you feel like the awards should have any respect behind them. Which is sad because also... The awards should have some respect behind them, not just because for an award to mean something, there has to be a certain degree of weight behind it. There's also a matter of, honestly, all credit to Jeff, Jeff Keighley on this, that the, at least the award process as far as for nominees and doing the votes and stuff, actually makes sense and has weight to it. It is a Critics' Choice Awards. This isn't a lame Viewers' Choice Awards show where People can just spam Matt votes from Madden and Call of Duty, and those games will win. Every year. Not because they're good, but because lots of people saw them. This isn't a... This is like the Academy Awards, where theoretically people in the fields that the awards have been handed out for are voting for them, but oftentimes we have cases of people being so far behind the times that you get stuff like Tron, the original Tron, not getting nominated for any special effects awards because they used CG and therefore it was considered cheating. As an awards processes go, this was good. But they choke in the presentation. They fail in the presentation. The show spends a lot of time, a lot of time when it wasn't doing stupid sketches, trying to bring awareness of the Child's Play charity, getting people to donate, and doing a donation from the show through various little backstage sketches and games and stuff, like, for example, um, Felicia Day doing real-life Fruit Ninja by having fruit, by dressing up in a tarp and getting fruit, fruit thrown at her and having to cut it with a katana. I actually liked that bit. It was cool. But the fact is... One, they didn't donate much money. Like one, like I think the highest they got kind of was two hundred bucks for one section. And then, in fact, of the matter is, Child State Charity, when Gabe and Tycho founded, it, if you look back in the news posts on their site, this was meant to be a total antithesis of the attitude promoted by, among others, Jack Thompson that video gamers are either sociopathic, violent imbeciles who will be made into murderous freaks by video games or total douchebags who laugh at the misery of others and who can't be asked to do anything in the community to help it and make it better. And Child's Play has helped to a certain extent, break those images. 
as gamers, we can point to Child's Play when someone says, oh, all gamers are obnoxious douchebags. We can point to Child's Play and all the, the financial support that Child's Play has received from the community and all the good that Child's Play has done and say, oh, hey, no, we're not all a bunch of assholes. We can be good people. We are good people. And then we have the Spike VGAs who near their can tell are doing these Child's Play segments to defray criticism saying, oh hey, we're not just pandering to douchebags and assholes. We can be good people. We can work for a good cause. But, you're, but ultimately the message aspect of things is failing. You're either now linking Child's Play with the douchebags and assholes, which hurts Child's Play and hurts the gamer community, or you are just looking like you're covering your ass pathetically. Not just like pathetically covering your, yeah, pathetically covering your ass in a pathetic fashion. I'm getting redundant. I'm all said and done with the VGAs. Is there potential here for this to become a decent awards show? Maybe. And here's what ultimately needs to happen. The awards show needs to become focused on the awards. The big reveal trailers and stuff, you can still do those, but what the way with the other commercials? Make the game publishers and so forth pay for them. It'll help financially support the show. And hell, you can actually use this to up the cost of ad time on your show, saying, hey, people are going to be watching this, paying attention during the ad for the show because they want to see the new reveals for all these games. So, people won't fast forward. People will watch the ads and thus your ads will get seen. Much in the same way that at the Super Bowl, ad space costs more because people will actually pay attention to the ads because people put thought into the ads. They need to take some of the focus away from the, well, video game sort of pseudo cultural crap but you mean like by which I mean these sort of attempts at self referential preferential humor that just fail no teabagging marines no none of the none of the stuff like the getting the guy who shouted who did a shouty profane YouTube video about how horrible the VGAs were to come to the VGAs for free so he can talk about how awesome the VGA show that is this year because it's not because it wasn't it made the guy made the guy look like he basically sold out if he wasn't a plant when he did the original video in the first place because I didn't see the original video it never went anything vaguely viral just and other than that honestly cut back on like the musical elements as far as the performance stuff. Unless you're getting like chiptune artists to come out um, or video games live to do something or get an orchestral performance conducted by Nubo I can not feel his pretty good name Nubo Urematsu um, the Final Fantasy composer guy or anything like that don't bother with the mu with big music acts unless the music acts are in games influ directly influenced by games or yeah, but yeah based on, or just chip tunes where it's being create or the music is being created on gaming hardware that's like the three places where the music fits not Dead Mouse doing dubstep or any other type of techno. Just make it relevant to what you're talking about. And finally, and just put the focus on the awards. Less dumb comedy sketches, more handing out trophies and putting awards in people's hands. Make this show be about the people who are winning them. Make this about giving game developers a chance to make themselves visible, make the team leaders and so forth visible to modern audiences. If, for example, Bastion had won a VGA, I would love to have seen Greg Kasavin 
and some of the other Super Giants team members people on stage and say, accepting the award. If Bioware had won an award for a game that they put out this year, or when they win an award for Mass Effect 3, because they will win a VGA, I would love to have the guys from Bioware, as far as the head studio, on stage accepting the award. Making game developers visible helps make this industry a little more respectable, I think. I mean, honestly, the two things that made comic books more respectable was when the stories got more serious and legitimately mature, and to a certain extent also, certain extent also when the artists became more visible. When you knew who, for instance, Warren Ellis was, who Neil Gaiman was, who Jack Kirby was, and John Romita Jr. were. With film, making it about the artists helped a lot. In, while film is a more visible medium, not just knowing who the actors were, but who the writers were, knowing who Spielberg is, who Redford were, what Redford was, who Scorsese and Tarantino and all of those guys, that it's not just a matter of this is a oh this is a this isn't just an Errol Flynn movie. This isn't just a Brad Pitt movie. This is a Steven Spielberg movie. This is a John Woo movie. This is a Quentin Tarantino movie. And thus, we are interested in the Artur director and what he brings to the table beyond just, oh, there's an actor here who can do a good performance. I will watch this even if the material is terrible. So... With that in mind, what will it take for me to watch the VGAs again? Quite simple. They need to basically answer my criticisms. They need to incorporate my criticisms in terms of move the focus to the awards, cut back on stupid sketches, stupid, unnecessary celebrity guest appearances, dumb, presumably metatextual humor, like teabagging, and... Do it, well, repeatedly. Be consistent. Don't just do it for one show. Do it for several years. Basically, give a chance for a word to get out that, oh, hey, we are actually not goofing around here. We mean something. This is supposed to be legit. Come watch us now. If you do that, and keep doing it, I will start paying attention again. Because it means that you want my attention. And you're not just standing around with your... Well, mooning the audience, or... Acting like you're freaking LMFAO, thinking you're clever. Going wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yes, I made a reference to... Pot anyway. This has gone on too long. I've given the VGAs much more time than they needed. Next week will be after Christmas. But I'll still be doing a video. I'll be taking a look at an actually good game. I'll be looking at Deus Ex Human Revolution. I will not be doing a full story recap because this is a new game and I want you to enjoy the story. Or at least if you're interested in this story, I don't want to spoil it for you. So look forward for that next time. And next time will be a little less improv. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.